Uh, Henry Hunter to receive here in the installations of Rurata Healthcare uh, Belgian Oncology News. Dr. Luc Dirix, who is head of oncology research in the San, uh, San Augustinus uh, Hospital in Antwerp, which is a part of the DNA network. Dr. Dirix, thank you for being with us. Um, the activity of uh, your hospital in the field of oncology is quite amazing. How do you explain that? Well, it's, it's historical, of course. It's, um, St. Augustine's used to be a large maternity hospital. And from that, there's a history of gynecological oncology, and which has been now more or less um, invigorated by more and more research, which, which was started some 20 years ago. So we have both clinical research and preclinical research department in the Department of Oncology. In how many uh, clinical trials were you involved in the last years? A lot. I mean, we, we are mainly focusing on early clinical trials, so mainly phase one and phase two. And if you then delimited this to breast cancer, it's about some 10, 15 trials a year which are initiated. And we have currently 60 trials ongoing in the broad field of oncology, which is oncology, hematology and radiotherapy. So 60 active trials in our center. You know, we treat some 500 new cases of breast cancer, so it's a large department. Mm -hmm. uh, how many patients does it mean? It means, well, if you look at radiotherapy, which is more or less a surrogate of new cancer cases, we irradiate some 2,000 new patients every year, which is, by Belgian proportions, well, medium to more than medium-sized. A few weeks ago we met uh, in San Antonio. Uh, what are for you the real highlights of this meeting? Well, from a clinical point of view, I think the highlights are uh, mainly in the endocrine field. We, we have now strong data that, well, over the years we have learned that prolonging endocrine treatment is advantageous for patients. And we also know there is an advantage, certainly for subgroups, uh, patients with worse prognosis and younger patients, that adding complete endocrine ablation to chemotherapy seems to be beneficial. So it's a major major message. Of course, this comes with substantial side effects. It's something we have to balance. But the fact remains now for sure that in poor prognosis patients, patients we were very young, the additional, uh, the addition of endocrine suppression, of ovarian suppression is useful. And that's a clear message. Um, if you look at the prevention also, the prevention data from tamoxifen also there, it doesn't mean that everyone needs to do it, but there is a clear advantage and it increases with time. These are two clear endocrine messages. If you look at other types of breast cancer, then in triple negative breast cancer, we have the first messages, the first ones, early data yet, that immune checkpoint inhibitors are active in at least a subgroup of patients with triple negative breast cancer. That's a group of patients where there hasn't been any major breakthroughs during the past years, but now you see that it is active in a subgroup, but it's the, uh, it's the first, the first trials, the first data, so something which uh, to look forward to.